now I have to cut all these pins and these are the pins that will make all the connections between the beams and the reinforcing bars and the cords and the posts and they give you the sizes in the instructions so you end up with very specific numbers they're they're all identified and quantities and so on everything from 0.385 there's 18, 18 of them all the way down to 0.615 those are all the connecting pins and what I've done I marked them all with a, a set of with a set of calipers and cut them off with a cutting disc using using my Dremel with a disc on the end just a little bit oversized and then I trued them up on the on the uh, sanding disc and then after I did that I trimmed the other the other end of the pin and trued that up so that it matched the opening in the verniers here. Now there are other gauges you can use but and then what <clears throat> I did finally after that is I took a file and I put a very sl small bevel around that lip here take the burr off so that they'll slide through the pin connections uh, very easily. So this is the largest one and this is the smallest one and you can see the difference in sizes here. You'll recall earlier on the sheet of styrene, black styrene, I removed all these trusses, these truss rods here, and each one of them had a, a small hole in there for the bar, the little eye bars. But these are all laser cut, so they're not absolutely smooth in terms of the opening. And so here's here's a typical Here's a typical rod, and these are the ones that, that'll go across the bottom of the truss. And these holes here, while they are laser cut, they're not true. And they've made them actually slightly smaller. So I can true them up with a drill, and the pins will fit through a little better. So I'll show you that. John supplies two drills in, the, in this kit for the tube principal holes that have to be drilled. This is the 332nd that are all the pin connections. So what I've done is I put in a block of wood in my vise, 332nd drill, and then I've drilled a pilot hole in this block of wood here. Now what I'll do is I'll take each of these rods that need to be trued up. This gives me support here. You can't just arbitrarily drill because what you do you'll catch that and it'll rip and break. So starting the drill press and I'll put that hole over the eye bar over that and I'll just run the drill through now that's trued that up and that's a perfect hole cleaned up nice and smooth so the pins will be able to go straight through but this blocks important because you need it as support and then of course the pilot hole is a guide to to put that uh, rod as close to the center as possible. I put a few things away but my my workbench basically ends up looking like this cluttered with all the bits and pieces that that I've uh, been wor working with and the tools that I've been using but now we're going to be working on the top cords and so it's time to clean up the bench put everything away because I'm going to need a nice flat, smooth, straight edge uh, surface to build the uh, the, the um, top cords because they're, they're 30 inches long. So I'm I'm going to need I'm going to need a lot of, a lot of room through here to to lay it out and get good accuracy on it. Following the instructions, what I've done is I've glued a strip of 12 by 12 timber from Mount Albert Scale Lumber Company because it's very true and straight. And what I did is I took a, a straight edge, in this case an 18 inch steel rule, and I glued this piece of strip wood to it. Now it's not 30 inches long like the bridge so I've had to put a piece on at the end and I put weights on it 
and put the steel edge against it. So now I have this strip of wood permanently bonded to the illustration board as a guide. And then I've taken each of these top cords. This is this is the end cord which has the steel plate in the end. And I placed it against the guardrail. Oh, that, that strip wood. And the next one of the center cords. And what I do is I, I put some weights against it. But the point here is that we want to make sure that these three holes here line up with the cords across the bottom. So I've taken, as the instructions say, two of these cords on the bottom, put pins in them, and they will go in here and here in these two locations and once they're in there then we can determine well, how much to take off the ends of these two cord sections to make sure that pin fits exactly in so then the centers will be exactly the same it may take a bit of filing to do that but that's fine we can do that now I've put this steel cord here with a pin through here and I'm just going to put a weight against it to hold it against this back edge and I've done it the same with the opposite end and you can see that this pin here is on an angle so it's not going to it's not going to fit in that hole in the center and judging by the angle there I'm going to have to take a little bit off of the ends of one of these and uh, likely this one here I'll sand that off with my sanding disc just very slightly and true up the hole, the half holes on each end so that that pin will go straight through. This is a way to ensure that everything at the, across the top the columns everything lines up top to bottom. Now you can see I've assembled all four strips and by following the instructions what I've done is I've reinforced each of the connections in here so at this connection here now that these center holes are dead center at the joint in between I put a, a plate in the bottom and, the par and, and AC seated in and then I put a pin in through the hole drop this reinforcing plate on the pin that goes straight through an AC seat on both sides. So now we've got a reinforcing plate across the side, one in underneath the top plate, one on the opposite side, and all these pins line up completely accurately through there. And we have the full 30 inch top cord now ready to go. Nice and straight and ready to be to be painted. After I assembled the four sections, it has a little bit of flex in the still, so I want to be fairly careful. But I painted the inside to the back of the brass. If you recall earlier, I said we can't put the frets in because it'd be very hard to paint in there without overflowing it with paint. So the next step then was using again the straight edge. I like to keep everything um, pressed tight against a straight edge. So I've got all these little iron blocks and I like to keep them pressed against this so that every action that I make in assembling this, every component will hold it in a position at some level. So what we'll do now is take the frets and these are the ones that I cut out originally and there are rivets on one side, not rivets, sorry, bolts on one side and they match the ones on the underside of this flange so you want to be able to figure out which is the correct way so there is one on the back side here and that's the way it will go as opposed to this way and there's a bit of a curl in that 
from snap cutting it off the the sheet so I just flatten that out and what I do is I take and put a little bit of ACC against this plate here and I bond that first one just to hold it in place adjusting it so that it's in line and once that's done and that's bonded then I take this really handy tool I mentioned before which is a darning needle in um, a cork and I lift a little bit of ACC off, off of um, some scrap or something like that. Now again I'm just using an iron block because I got lots of scraps of these but what I'll do is I'll hold this up and I'll put a dab of ACC at each connecting point and once that's done I'll take one of these blocks and I'll just lay it on there and what that'll do is it'll hold these down until the ACC is cured. When that's done all the way down one side I'll turn it around and I'll do the same thing again. This is why the needle is very very in, uh, useful because when you lift some adhesive the needle will go, you can just pre push the needle underneath each one of these and leave a tiny little dot of ACC and then again I'll just put the weight back on it. it takes a few seconds to really hold and once it's done you know the the whole unit has a little bit more rigid, rigidity again and it still has some flexibility but it's not it doesn't seem quite as flexible because it's taken out some of the flex that's in the plastic itself and that will be the next step finishing off the second cord.